I've got an awesome new finger exercise for you guys to try out that's going to help increase your finger speed and dexterity and you can do it with or without your bass and we're going to learn how to play it right now. Hey guys, Clay here from Clay's Bass Lessons where each week I help you guys master the bass, find your groove and put a little music in your life. I've been flat out this week because I'm playing in a theatre show run for the musical Catch Me If You Can. That's that Tom Hanks and Leonardo DiCaprio movie from a few years back, but it's the live stage version. It's a great show with lots of jazz big band music in it, and if, ever, if it's ever on in your town, you should definitely go check it out. And as you can see, most of my gear is missing because it's all at the theatre at the moment. So instead of doing an usual technically awesome episode this week, I'm going to do another quick tip lesson for you. I want to start using these quick tip videos as a way of giving you guys a regular exercise challenge to have a go at. So this is my personal favorite and most used exercise I learned to play on the bass that helps kind of increase your ability to play with all four fingers and gives all your fingers equal use and strength and dexterity. My old bass tutor, when I was at high school, he would make me play this at the start of every lesson as a warm up. And he'd make me start it with a metronome and gradually increase the speed over and over until I couldn't keep up anymore. And then he'd write down that speed and challenge me to beat it the next week. So the exercise is called the spider pattern. Now there's heaps of variations and different permutations of this finger pattern out there called the spider, but this is my personal favorite one and the one I teach all my students to do regularly as well. So let's get learning it. So we usually play this pattern at the 5th to 8th fret position on the neck. You start finger 1 on the A on the E string, and every second note in the pattern will be on the A string. And the finger pattern goes like this, we go finger 1, then 3, down on the A string, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2. So just repeating that again, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2. 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2. It can be a lot trickier than it looks, especially that last couple of fingers between finger 4 and 2. If you're not used to using finger 4 like that, it's a really great way of challenging you to get more used to using it. Just remember though, when you're doing the pattern, keep the other fingers behind the one you're playing down. Don't let your fingers jump out as you play every note. Keep them down nice and low, and especially the ones behind where you're playing should be still down, basically touching the string. Not pressing it down, but still touching. And make sure that you can play the notes legato, that it's not short staccato notes, but nice and smooth and ringing through. Now if you find it too hard to go straight into that pattern, what you can do to start off with is just play all of the notes on the E string. So you can play it 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2, all on the E string. So once you actually can play the pattern, what I want you to do is put on a metronome at a nice comfortable tempo and then try and play it at least four repeats in a row at that tempo. So I'm going to show you guys, I'll do it at about 120 BPM first. One, two, three, four. Cool. Once you've got that, then what you're going to do is gradually increase in increments of about 10 or 20 BPM each time and keep going round and round until you can't keep up anymore. And then once you get that speed, mark that speed down and challenge yourself to beat it the next day. This is what I do regularly as part of my warm up routine when I want to start playing or right before a gig. Eventually when you start getting really good at the pattern you can get over speeds of about 300 BPM um, at crotchets or 150 at quavers, which is about this speed. One, two, three, four. Then what we can do is start to up the challenge and move every A string note down to the D string. So the pattern will become this. One, two, three, four. And then if you get to 300 BPM with that challenge, try to move it down another string and start jumping between the E string and G string. One, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. 
As you can see, when you get to that stage, you can start to see why it's called the spider pattern. Your fingers look like really creepy spider legs running across the neck. And lastly, I did say that you can practice this exercise with or without your base. So that's what I used to do when I was at school. I'd be sitting in class or I would be watching TV or riding in the car, or waiting for the bus, whatever I was doing where I was just sitting around, just listening and not using my hands for anything, just twiddling my thumbs. I would actually make that thumb twiddling that most people do when they're bored actually useful and I'd sit there tapping one three two four three one four two so you can do that just tapping against your thumb or sometimes I'd sit my right hand in my left hand so it felt like the base neck I could put my fingers on either side and go one three two four three one four two eventually I used to challenge myself to make that harder and harder so I would do things like starting one three two four three one four two on this hand and delay a second one in this hand afterwards one three, two, four, but one, three, three, one, four, two, and so on. I'd actually do two separate spiders at the same time, and it just absolutely kind of breaks your brain, but it really gets your finger control and finger dexterity way up. Okay, awesome stuff. I hope you smash that drill and it helps you gain some extra speed and finger dexterity and control in your hands. So let me know in the comments, what was your top metronome speed that you got up to before you maxed out? And did you manage to make it into the 300 plus BPM plug? I know for myself, I personally max out somewhere around the 450 to 500 range, depending on the day. But that's all for today, guys. So why don't you click here to see my right hand alternating fingers quick tip video, or click here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch next. And then click here if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet. But that's all for today. So until next time, go play, practice, and play some more. Three,